Welcome back everybody to another episode of the Charlie and Cara show and for those that were listening last week we were diving all into the coaching dynamic where I am the voice of the audience, Cara is our lovely expert and coach and she will be talking us through this week about confidence and self-esteem and actually how we can start that journey because it's so easy to say you know what, you just need to have a bit more confidence, or just about your self-worth, or when you've got that self-esteem, you won't have those issues. However, I've been working on that for years and I still have not mastered the whole confidence and self-acceptance yet. Mm -hmm. So we did touch on past struggles and insecurities last week and where everything comes from. And um, yeah, now we wanna dive into how we can actually start recreating and reprogramming our minds and start showing up with confidence, right? Yeah, exactly. So hopefully sharing some tools with you guys throughout this episode to help you with whatever your insecurities and self-esteem blocks are so that you can move forward and start to create not only a new story for yourself, but um, really creating a new chapter moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's dive in <laughs> all together as well. That's the, that's what, like, we love this so much because mm-hmm. as we've said before, we would be doing this anyway, off camera, off audio. We would be having these one-on-one chats and coaching sessions. Mm-hmm. And we strongly believe in doing it out loud and me just kind of putting myself out there vulnerably and Cara sharing all of her amazing tools and experience in the coaching world. Like, why not all be coached at the same time? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, let's just go straight in. For for instance, what I was sharing last week, um, I remember you saying that one of the main things when I have insecurities that I shared around, you know, my future partner falling for my best friend and how I've had all these fears around being left and Mm -hmm. not being good enough or someone must be a better catch than me. obviously confidence would change that so how does someone like me and the rest of us that don't have that self-esteem what do we do with that and where do we start Mm -hmm. so I think it's important to stress just a little bit quickly about what we shared on last week as well yeah absolutely around for me I believe the first thing is always uncovering and creating that awareness around where it stems from because Mm. We hear, and you guys listening have probably heard about positive affirmations and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. and there's definitely power to them, but if you haven't done some of that clearing work first, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like just putting a band-aid over top of the wound and expecting it to heal. So we need to do some of that clearing work first before a lot of those new habits and positive tools can actually settle in. Yeah. And as well, settle into the subconscious mind so that you start to believe those new stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we are what we believe, right? So mm-hmm. if we believe that we are enough, we believe that we're confident, then we become that. Mm-hmm. So it all stems from the thoughts and beliefs. Yes. Is that correct? So then we have to change. We have to look at those yes. first. But on a very deep level. Because... Mm-hmm. It's one thing to stand in the mirror and say, to I'm, yourself beautiful. Every day, I'm beautiful, <laughs> I'm enough, right? But if you're not actually believing it and feeling it on a core level, if there's some kind of disconnect or some old stories or, or again, old trauma. Old trauma that's in your subconscious mind, it's blocking you. So you're saying, I'm beautiful, I'm enough, yeah. but your mind is saying back to you, mm, no, mm, you're not. We all know because <laughs> of that past experience over and over again mm-hmm. that, yeah. That yeah, you maybe not, it's not okay. actually true. So doing that releasing work is always number one. And then as you're starting to see that there are lies in your mm. past or there is trauma that's clouding your vision, that's when there's a lot more power to add in those positive habits and start building mm. yourself up with almost like a new empowered foundation versus the repetitive foundation you've had for years right so an example being um so I shared with you last week about the guy at school Mm -hmm. who picked everyone on the trip Mm -hmm. to France the school trip but me and like whispered in their ears and gave them love letters and I didn't get any so that was one of the first early signs that I'm not enough I'm not as attractive as everyone else or there's something about me that's not you know wanted Mm -hmm. so you're saying that not only do we want to implement confidence going forward but we have to 
find those memories and moments and then re like what would you yeah. call it <laughs> yeah I would, like, I would call it reframing almost in mm-hmm. the sense of reframing it into a positive and then for instance so like I said last week with you know maybe he actually really liked you but and yeah. that was his way of showing it was trying to get your attention mm-hmm. by kind of picking you uh, or picking on you or isolating you in that way and we yeah. know that at that age that's really typical for guys yeah. to do that so it's not that maturity level yet yeah. <laughs> of just going after what they want they yeah. play games mm-hmm. so reframing it in a way that makes you feel better even if it's not necessarily true we'll never know the truth because yeah. every single person in that time will have a different perception of it right so, you just create what, what you perception want. is going to help you moving forward. And I guess, and like I said, I, initially that would make me feel like, oh, I'm in denial or I'm lying to myself. Mm-hmm. But actually there are endless possibilities and mm-hmm. variables for any reason why a man yeah. or someone doesn't in that moment want you. And it doesn't yeah. mean what we equate it to mean. I mean it as well. I'm not enough. Yeah. Because if I was they would all want me. Mm -hmm. So it must mean I'm not enough. But actually, there could be so many different things on a micro level. Mm -hmm. It could have even just been the way that I was quite a tomboy and he just didn't like tomboys. And that's the way it is. So many simple little reasons for it. Yeah. And without diving in too deep on a quantum level in the quantum field, all of those. Don't worry, we'll get there. (laughs) We'll go into the quantum field at some point. Cara is a quantum healer too. So we'll we'll do that one episode. But yeah, yeah. So all of those possibilities exist in the quantum field so him picking you and isolating you exists as one timestamp, but him actually liking you the most is equally as possible yeah it's just that one um one form of that mm-hmm. existence was experienced or yes. that moment was experienced at that time but in the field all possibilities are there so you just so get to pick like, and hey, recreate it if i want to feel better about myself and this is something that's really keeping me stuck i'm gonna choose change a it. different reality yeah why wouldn't we yeah. yeah definitely especially if it's impacting the rest of our lives why would mm-hmm. we let something from 10 years ago even mm-hmm. though we do why would we let that dominate and dictate our happiness going forward yeah and our love going forward yeah and that was definitely a huge part for myself as well in building confidence because I struggled with that for years and mm-hmm. I finally realized well I could continue fueling this reality yeah. and reaffirming those things and criticizing myself and focusing on all the negative stories mm-hmm and feeling like shit (laughs) or I could choose a different reality and really focus in on um, reframing as I said and then also pulling in examples or memories that reaffirm the opposite Mm. so our minds tend to focus on the negatives yeah but there are probably a million times in your childhood or over your lifetime where someone did choose you or someone complimented you and but we don't focus on those things (laughs) yeah (laughs) we only go right for the negative ones yeah exactly and they're yeah yeah, they said oh you're more than enough or thank you so much for doing this or complimenting you or giving you love and you're my favorite or whatever it is anything like that and yet our brains don't tend to hold on to that to boost us up. So if you can spend more energy focusing on all those empowered memories, and yeah. that empowered story, you're starting to shift not only your subconscious pattern, yeah. but also your whole view of yourself. Right. And just mm-hmm. quickly, in your experience and what you know, why does the brain automatically go to the negative? Why isn't it oh my God, but so many people love to meet mm-hmm. school and why do we focus on the one negative? Is there a reason for that? Is it a default setting? Is it, what is that? Yeah, from my understanding, I would say it's definitely an easy default mm. where that is kind of the most natural place for the mind to go. But as well, we look at you know parents who in- influence our subconscious mind growing up and when they're stressed, they're focusing on the negatives. We look at the media and that's always focusing on flaws or the things going wrong in the world. Mm. Everything in society is basically programmed <laughs> to focus on that yeah, negative it's crazy. and keep us stuck in that track. Yeah, in the fear trap. Mm-hmm. Okay, so with confidence <laughs> then, mm-hmm. 
to to go forward so like those of us that don't have the confidence and really just want to feel loving of who we are not beating ourselves up knowing that we're enough if something doesn't work out with a man Mm -hmm. or in a situation it's not personal Mm -hmm. and it's not because we're not a catch or that we're not enough how do we how do we reframe that where do we start with confidence Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple key points with that and really important places to implement and Mm -hmm. one of those is your belief or faith in a higher power like we kind of touched on on last week's episode if you can find some kind of level of trust or some kind of level of safety in something bigger than yourself then it's a bit easier to take off the blame Mm -hmm. of fully guilting yourself or fully taking it was me it didn't work out my fault yeah yeah there's something wrong with me Whereas if you can trust that, you know, everything's working out the way it's supposed to, that your absolute perfect partner is there, for example, then it's a lot easier to continue doing the work. It's not necessarily about bypassing it and taking no accountability, but mm-hmm. it's it's about creating this space where you can build up your confidence and not take full on beat yourself up go further down into those insecurities yeah so almost allowing yourself to create acceptance and self-love in your improvement Mm -hmm. so that you're building confidence finding more of that alignment but still moving forward I guess Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. so let's I love examples because then like we can really see it and Mm -hmm. like think of how we'd go through it Mm -hmm. or analogies too so if someone got broken up with or I'm sure so many of us have been dumped Mm -hmm. at some point and so many of us have broken up with people too Mm -hmm. how can we see that differently from well he left me so or a friend anyone really Mm -hmm. um but seeing as we were talking about loving romantic relationships mostly last week Mm -hmm. um when that happens what can we do differently in that moment and um, I guess what I think you're saying is, well, trusting that, that if that didn't work out, instead of getting caught up and hung up in the, oh, well, mm-hmm. it wasn't this, or he said, she said, or he mm-hmm. didn't love me or whatever. It's trusting that that was a lesson in the duration it lasted. Mm-hmm. And then once it's over, it clearly wasn't supposed to work out. So there's no real point getting hung up on it. Because if it was meant to work out, it would have worked out. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it didn't, instead of taking all the like victim or all the blame, Mm -hmm. it's, would you say being a bit more sort of pragmatic about it? Like, look, that was the lesson. And Mm -hmm. although it's very sad and we can't avoid pain and loss is extremely painful, Mm -hmm. it didn't work out. So therefore, of course, it wasn't supposed to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's a huge part of it. Yeah. And then the other part that I'm that I'm having pop into my mind as well is you think about how many people when they go through a breakup right after that they go on this like big spurt of empowerment. I mean there's there's two ways, but a lot of times we see people um they go get their hair, hair cut done. Oh yeah, get that new gym. fresh cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They start making these changes cuz they want to feel better within themselves. Yeah. And that can be a really powerful way to help move you on that path towards like realizing that you are still worthy and that you are still more than enough even if the relationship didn't work out whereas if we stay stuck in it or if we stay stuck in our head then all of those stories come out and it becomes a lot more limiting it becomes Mm. a lot more negative and it can be more difficult to build your confidence when you're telling all those Feeling negative so stories. Feeling so depleted and low and, and not enough. Mm-hmm. And so with that being said, when we are going through that, mm-hmm. when we have literally been broken up with or someone doesn't want us any longer or they reject a part of us mm-hmm. or they're bored with us, let's say, mm-hmm. it's very difficult, like for me, and I'm sure plenty of you feel mm-hmm. the same, to flip that around because what you're saying I do agree with and resonate with but on the other hand my brain's like well (laughs) the fact is he didn't want me or he Mm -hmm. was bored of me or he rejected me abandoned Mm -hmm. me how do we not take that personally is there any other areas of like 
tools or self-work we can do to kind of like help dissipate that a bit Mm -hmm. I think that's where the like intense self-love comes into play Mm -hmm. where you're starting to that could be positive affirmations that could be mirror work and creating a deeper relationship to yourself and you know connecting to yourself seeing your beauty seeing all the amazing qualities you have That could be looking at areas in your life where you have a ton of strength and you do Mm. have confidence and working on translating that into this kind of area, your relationship area, Mm. different things like that so that you can start to see yourself in a new light, even though you might still have that part of you that's going like, well, he didn't choose me or... This if I really happened. was that great, he would have chosen me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but allowing yourself to still build yourself up yeah. while working on that balance of trust and yeah. then creating that momentum forward. To me, it's all about moving forward, even if it's one step, one day at a time. Yeah. Because you're not going to wake up tomorrow and have a huge amount of confidence. Overnight. Overnight. And you could stand in front of the mirror all day and say positive affirmation. God, girl, you're gorgeous. And it's like, it's still not believing it. It's still not going to settle in strong enough. But over time, you'll start to notice those shifts. And it, again, becomes more of your default where you do see yourself. You do see your strengths. You do start to have that value. And you're not necessarily taking on all the blame for that relationship not working out. And you start to go, hey, he's actually missing out because I'm incredible. I bring all these things to the table. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of who I am and who I'm becoming. And so instead of me feeling horrible about this, I'm realizing that he's actually losing out as well. So it's not that victim story. So with that, I, I love that. But I found myself in the past, and I, I didn't want to do it in the future, mm-hmm. um, that I do that, but then there's an element of proving. And I think a lot mm. of women, or, or just human beings in general, when someone ends it with us, we want to show them how good we are, we want to show them what they're missing out on. And I've done mm. that, and I, going forward, don't want to do that again, because I want it to do it for myself. You know, exactly. whether they see it or not, mm. doesn't shouldn't matter if they happen to bump into you and you're feeling great, fine. But Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be about, you know, posting extra gorgeous pictures on Instagram or, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to see him and look my best or be my most confident because then once again, we're going outside of ourselves and I do that Mm -hmm. a lot. And I know other people do it because I have so many (laughs) friends similar to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So how can we like, how can we turn that around and really do it for ourselves and and can you just like dive into a little bit on the importance of that Mm -hmm. because it's all well and good doing this whole self-love thing having baths and candlelit this but Mm -hmm. if you're doing it for the wrong reasons it's not really doing the actual work and that's what I've spent my life doing is doing it for the wrong reasons and I want to change that yeah yeah I think that's such an amazing point yay (laughs) yeah because um most people are are doing that for others Mm -hmm. and I think what maybe comes in and what can be a helpful transition is just looking at the fact that if you are basing your self-worth on other people, whether it's family, friends, partners, Mm -hmm. your self-worth is always in someone else's hands, which means you don't have any control. Yeah. And it's about creating that self-empowerment. And to me, I think it's just, it can happen in a moment, something like that, where you're like, you know what, I'm taking my power back, it's time. It's time for me to do this for myself Yeah. because I am here. I'm the only one who's with me for the rest of my life. Yeah, it is my life. Yeah, exactly. And so making that conscious decision to choose yourself. And then if you're posting those pictures for yourself or you're going to the gym or getting the haircut, but it's because you believe you're going to feel better doing it. Yeah. And if they see it or not, that is irrelevant. Shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but really creating that prioritization, I guess, of yeah. yourself, which is hard because most of us and probably a lot of the listeners as well mm. are caught in a people-pleasing trap. I was just about to say <laughs> it's that just constantly going mm. to be pleased and approved by yeah other people yeah and Mm. so as long as we're putting our worth externally 
we'll never be able to create that internally. And that is a huge thing that yeah. I focus on for myself and for my clients because it is about creating that internal validation, being able to compliment yourself even if no one else is complimenting you. Yeah. Being able to see your strengths even if no one else is giving you credit for them. Or appreciate or yourself or know that you did that for the right reason even if it looks the wrong way. Like mm-hmm. you know your intentions yeah. and, and what you're about. And I, I th- yeah, oh, go, ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I think that's where just real true self-love yeah. isn't necessarily the the stereotypical things we see it can yeah. be face mask and all that stuff yeah. doesn't really like change it from the inside yeah. but it's about creating that internal that internal love of just like mm. I am choosing myself and I get to love mm. love everything about myself because this is who I am this is who I'm here to be I'm always improving I'm always on this journey to get better but I deserve to love myself now and make the most of every moment. And, yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, something else that came up as as you were talking was if we're always relying on it from outside of ourselves, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, it gives our control away. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, it means that then when that person maybe doesn't want us and we've done all that work for them, not for ourselves, yeah. and they still reject us or aren't interested Mm -hmm. then there's that crashing down of disappointment that it didn't work and then you're from you're back to square one again yeah so you're constantly basing it outside of yourself and you've done everything to try and please them to try and be enough to to match what they want from you and it's not and it's not enough enough, which is where we should go (laughs) that's clearly just not a vibrational like a good match we're just Mm -hmm. not a good energy match because again if we were we would naturally appreciate those things about each other and Mm -hmm. want to be together Mm -hmm. um so and, I think and that's be just safe to be your authentic self and know that yeah. your authentic self is enough. And For that them. is where I think because if you're struggling with insecurities or self-love, yeah, it's a lot easier to put on a mask and to try and play that role to match your partner or your friend group or what your parents want from you. Yeah, It's so much easier to play that role mm. than to be vulnerable and authentic because what if they reject me? in my truest form yeah and if I'm not confident in my truest form then I'm shattered if they reject me because well, I don't that, have that internal right and it's that failure thing isn't it some mm-hmm. people don't want to do and I've definitely been guilty of this like so many times you almost don't want to do your best because mm-hmm. if you work every moment of the day for an exam <laughs> yeah. for instance or put everything into a project and it fails then mm-hmm you have to accept that and it feels scary that you gave everything and it still didn't work it still Mm -hmm. wasn't enough so I think a lot of us self-included don't go all out or keep protected or just in case if it doesn't work out well I didn't do my best anyway I didn't I wasn't fully seen by him anyway Mm -hmm. because it's terrifying that if someone sees you in your all of your glory all of your ugly parts Mm -hmm you fully exposed and they don't want you that hurts Mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah but if you're showing up 90% yourself and 10% holding back or playing it safe or playing a role Mm -hmm. then if it falls and yeah you don't get the results or you don't have the partner it is a little bit easier to dismiss it and not take you don't take as much accountability or you maybe aren't as you're still crushed but not to the same extent yeah so it's a protective mechanism yeah but the problem with that is I've done that my whole life that Mm -hmm. way around and actually you end up just going oh god Mm -hmm. if only I'd given my best because then I'd know if they actually wanted me or not now I never know Mm -hmm. if it's because I did hold back and he felt that or because I was overly protective or Mm -hmm. needed too much security or you know anything like that so then it just makes us kind of have regrets so Mm -hmm. either way I think it's better to just give everything so that you know wow okay well you know what Even though it hurts, I did give everything. I did give my best. And it didn't work, so there's no regrets. And I think that then comes into the trust, right? Because it's a lot easier to accept that maybe this just really wasn't meant to be, or Mm -hmm. we weren't the right match, or it wasn't the right time. Yeah. Because you do feel confident and strong in yourself. You know you gave it your all. And if that wasn't enough, it is a bit easier to step back, accept it, and go your separate ways. Yeah. So there's just so many dynamics. There's so, so many, many dynamics. Pieces. I have one very quick last thing that I'd love to share mm-hmm. before we wrap up. And it's almost similar, identical to what we've talked about. But it is 
that putting your value as well if you mm. don't have that self value of what what your value is what you know you're good at or mm -hmm. just the fact that you're human is enough you are already valued mm -hmm. as soon as we put our value in a man's hands or someone else's hands or a boss's hands then the moment they go off you or change their mind you're then left going oh my god now I, now my, where yeah. am I going to get my value from Who, yeah. I don't have any so I know Always it's imperative dependent. exactly so you're going to keep going mm -hmm. and so moving forward with that how can if we don't know how to value ourselves how can you just value yourself because it's like you mm -hmm. said it's not an overnight thing where oh I value myself suddenly yeah what can we do with I think, understanding valuing ourselves? yeah I think one of the easiest tools that all of you listening could apply right away is to look at any area of your life where you do feel confident yeah where you do feel strength whether that's career whether that is relationships um, it could be anything you could have the strangest talent in the world and that could be where you where you focus on right now and looking at that one or two areas where you feel confident you feel secure you're able to value yourself and then start to create this shift of okay well if I'm if I can be good at these things and these things some of them might have come naturally, some of them might have taken a lot of time and effort and consistency, but if you can be good at one thing, you can be good at many things. If you can be confident in one area of your life, you can become confident in many areas of your life. Either through being natural or through hard work. Mm -hmm. So my only thing with that is, <laughs> that feels like you have to be good at something or do something in order to value. And that's my issue or my mm -hmm. confusion is, Sure, I could get better at this. I could become a better partner. I could be less insecure and jealous. And it would mm. be much more of an appealing, um, I'd be much more of an appealing partner, right? Mm. But if we base it outside of ourselves or on something that we're good at again, that still feels temporary. Yeah. So isn't it, there's maybe, something to be said for like an inner value of like, we're just... Yeah, no, that's perfect. Because a lot of times that could be just... I love that I'm really genuine or that I'm a kind and caring person nice. or empathetic. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something I'm so glad you said that it doesn't have to be something outside or that you're yeah, good at or like, but a it skill. could be, you know what? I just love and I do feel really good that I am providing this in the world or just by being my natural self, I'm helping people or mm -hmm. anything or that like, I'm, I'm kind or that I'm, I'm alive. And, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a soul that's, obviously here on this planet I meant to be here yeah yeah. The, yeah whatever it is right creating yeah that's that's perfect point creating that internal value and just finding as many areas as you possibly can where you do already feel confident or you do feel proud of yourself or you like these characteristics and traits about yourself yeah and then using those because those are already believable to your mind. Yeah, because you, you already it. are it. You already know, oh yeah, like I am kind or I am a nice person. And then it's translating that and working on continuing to like to spread build. that further mm. and build So have up. more and more things about yourself that you start to appreciate and love. Mm -hmm. And that creates an overall mm -hmm. more of a value for yourself. Mm -hmm. So what are your three things that you, <laughs> like what, what things internally did you help um, for me, Value I think, yourself. yeah, I think just realizing that, you know, I'm bringing good to the world and that yeah. just by being myself, I'm able to empathize, hold space, you know, be kind. Mm -hmm. To me, kindness is like more important than any of our external things. You're a good person. Yeah. That's enough to value yourself, to believe you deserve the best, mm. you know, that you're here to, to do good in whatever way that is. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. three. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. I love but, that. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Is there any final words that you want to say leaving me and all of our, you know, viewers and audience between now and next week's episode? Are there a few things that, final words or things that mm -hmm. we can start on? Yeah, I think just looking for those areas where, like I said, you do feel value already and there might be some people listening who are really struggling to find some at this time. Yeah. And if you can just find one thing and run with that and just remind yourself as much as you can throughout over and the day over. Yeah. that I am enough because of this or I do love this one thing about myself. Sometimes 
that is enough to get us started. And the more you start shifting that, building to it, then you're going to find it easier to continue to, to keep expand adding. and grow. And then as well, just being kind to yourself. Smile at yourself. Every time you see yourself in the mirror, smile and tell yourself you you love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Choosing you. and Choose yourself. And um, so many more things that we'll have to get into as we move forward on yeah. our podcast so many go yeah on forever exactly but. we'll keep unraveling mm-hmm. throughout the episodes and one more thing i would add to that is something that i'm working on at the moment is continuing continuing <laughs> <laughs> to choose myself or make good choices for me that are going to mm-hmm. help me feel better so let's say i'm tempted to do yeah. this and it's like the addictive part of me knowing that that's not going to be good for me in the long run as tempting as it is mm-hmm. this is going to be a better loving choice yeah and continuing to yeah. to do that and eventually just like wow mm-hmm. i'm making great choices for myself and yeah yeah everything every choice you make choosing yourself like you said if you're if you're torn between foods and one food is like a comfort food but you know it makes you feel sick or makes you feel bad like choose loving foods Mm -hmm. choose loving words for yourself choose a loving environment and friends family or whatever space you need just constantly choosing yourself yeah because after all we have a choice right so Mm -hmm. we can either choose things that are gonna help us grow and feel better about ourselves or that are gonna go down a bad rabbit hole and keep Mm -hmm. us stuck Mm -hmm. so if we do want the growth for those of us that do want to feel better and have a freer life a happier life Mm -hmm. a more confident life then the work is Mm -hmm. choosing as much as possible the good stuff for us yeah exactly good thoughts yeah and you'll start to feel more empowered every choice you make because you'll you'll start to realize that you do deserve it yeah and you deserve to feel good and and have amazing things and you'll just keep building momentum Mm -hmm. yeah love that thank Mm -hmm. you Cara. you're welcome i hope you guys (laughs) found that very helpful and and as we've said before just reach out anytime to our email address or our instagram just dm us if you have any questions for Kara and I or any topics you want to talk about um, specifically that you want us to kind of dive into together as a coaching session we would love to hear from you so Mm -hmm. thank you for listening all of our beautiful listeners and yeah we're so happy to be sharing this with you Mm -hmm. see you guys next week see you guys next week bye (laughs)